Mm. And welcome back to Otaku No Video. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Where today I'm going to give you a spoiler-free review, although we'll get into a little bit of detail, of Kite, a 1998 uh, OVA slash film. It was released in a couple of different ways uh, made in Japan. Now, Kite was directed and conceived by Yasuomi Umetsu. And if you want to know where it came from, it's actually presaged by his work on a hentai. That's right. Uh, there's a hentai series called Cool Devices, sort of an anthology film. And episode seven, he directed and conceived. And the, the concept is somewhat similar to the concept of Kite. Uh, the story ends up quite different, but you'll see some similarities. Now, Kite is a psychological thriller about a young girl assassin. It's actually quite controversial, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, anime budgets were historically very low at this point in anime history, and boy, Kite is a perfect example of this. Uh, there will be um, quiet scenes of dialogue or, or thought with no animation, and then suddenly we'll go into a, an action scene where there's constant kinetic moving, uh, movement and stuff being thrown around the screen, and it's pretty darn wild. And unfortunately, the art style does vary dramatically from shot to shot. Um, it's very clear that there are different animators doing the action sequences and are doing the, uh, you know, the, the quiet dialogue scenes and things like that. And, and um, it can feel uh, not just abrupt, but it can feel almost like you're watching different pieces of anime. This does cause abrupt changes in tempo. Now, to Umetsu's credit, um, this does fit the style of the story. You have this um, pretty quiet girl um, who pulls a gun, and suddenly we get this brief, intense uh, sequence of action. Now, let's talk direction. Uh, Umetsu does a fascinating uh, job of framing his characters. They're often slightly off-frame, or otherwise composed in a way that gets across a certain emotion, using uh, color and other things to uh, just evoke certain feelings in the viewer. There's also a lot of attention paid to the rundown urban environment of the film. Kite is littered with trash, human and otherwise, which is important to the overall feel and the, um, the, the tone and the message of the film. And let's talk about that human trash. Um, so our main character is a girl who's taken in by a cop. Again, I'm just getting through premise things here. A uh, girl taken in by a cop, um, and he basically uh, turns her into a vigilante. So he's trying to get all the people who, all the bad guys who, for whatever reason, um, get off and, and aren't punished by the system, uh, the main character, Sawa, is meant to go in and well, kill them, basically. Uh, because who would expect a young girl to suddenly commit a homicide? Now, Sawa's relationship with this cop is the most important element of the film. Um, she does what he says, but she doesn't really like him. And uh, their troubled relationship becomes a key element of the film. And let's be honest, this is basically taking advantage of Sawa. I mean... Um, he's taken her in, there's nowhere else for her to go, but he's basically taking advantage of her, so what is she supposed to do with that? And the dialogue's interesting. It's refreshingly plain and uh, everyday. Characters don't have very different um, styles of speech. Everyone kind of talks the same, but they have the same kind of simple patterns that you often see in real life. In other words, characters don't monologue. Um, they say very simple things to each other, very basic things to each other. Often they don't say anything at all. Um, sometimes they don't respond to each other, which is very much like real life. Moreover, a lot of the conversations are brief, which gives us some time to think about how the characters uh, might be reacting to those lines of dialogue, or just what they're thinking about in general. Now, the film's tendency to pause is, I think, the film's greatest downfall. Uh, sometimes the action sequences are so over the top, and the characters often so despicable, that I was struck by the movie's kind of silliness, really. Um, it can just seem... Um, absurdly dark, uh, an absurdly um, violent meditation on people. Honestly, it sometimes feels like a pornographer's attempt at a serious movie. And I know that's unfair, but it, I, this is what I felt while watching. Now, let's address that. Uh, the original uncut, unedited release of Kite included pornographic sequences uh, of Sawa and the cop having sex. Um, moreover, and again, I'm not trying to get into spoilers here, but this is important. Um, in other words, you, know, you need to know this to know whether you, or not you want to watch this. Um, it is shown at certain points in the film, um, trying to be delicate about this, um, that their sexual relationship goes back 
to when Sawa was quite young. This has actually led Kite to being banned in some countries as just outright child pornography. Now, other versions keep the violence but edit out all the sex. Some edit out just the sex with the younger versions of Sawa. Um, it just depends on what versions you get. You can find the original uncut version, and that will show you everything for better or worse. But just be aware there are some kind of trigger warnings there. Overall, Kite is a relatively complex film in terms of what it presents to its audience. Um, it has a lot of despicable characters um, and a central character who's in this very stuck situation and relationship and we kind of watch her wriggle and, and see what she tries to do with that situation. Uh, it's quite dark um, and uh, it is relatively thought-provoking. Probably along the same level as say Akira can be a little thought-provoking uh, at times. Uh, it's certainly not a massively deep film. Um, but there's more to it than there is your regular action movie, certainly. Um, so I can't say that I would necessarily recommend Kite, um, but it is a, a, a certainly a very unusual and remarkable little bit of work.